بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه. Okay, so welcome to this new lecture in the Internet of Things course CS 450. So in this lecture, I'm going to talk about the enabling technologies that have contributed to the emergence of Internet of Things applications. So basically, I'm going to cover four major technologies which are the RFID systems, near field communications, wireless identification and sensing platform, and finally wireless sensor networks. So I'm going to start with RFID systems because they are one of the most important platforms that have contributed to the emergence of the Internet of Things and one of the earliest devices that uh, were used for this respect. So what is radio frequency identification or RFID systems? So basically, uh, an RFID is uh, composed of a microchip with an antenna to broadcast a unique uh, 96-bit identifier, which is the ID. So it's <clears throat> RFID, it contains an ID that will be broadcasted by a chip. Okay, so radio frequency identification is the wireless use of electromagnetic fields to transfer data for the purpose of automatically identifying and tracking tags attached to objects. So basically we use these tags to attach them to some object that we would like to identify or also to track. And these tags will contain an identifier and this identifier will, use, will be used actually to uniquely identify a particular object of interest. So basically there are three types of RFID systems. There are passive RFID, semi-passive RFID and active RFID. So passive RFID systems they don't have any battery, no internal power at all, like you can see here. In and the property of this RFID tags is uh, that they have they are small in size, they have short communication range, and they have also unlimited lifetime because they don't rely on any internal power or battery. So how actually these passive tags will emit the identifier? So the idea is simple. It's based actually on the electrical current that is induced by the antenna. So an RFID tag is actually contains an antenna as you can see here. So this antenna will broadcast the identifier as soon as the incoming signal input that comes from an RFID reader will power the tag. Okay, so when you put this RFID tag close an RFID reader, the RFID reader will send an electromagnetic signal and when this signal reaches the passive RFID, in this case it will be powered and then it will transmit to the ID. So this RFID, passive RFID tags are cheap, are the cheapest in the market. So basically the cost is uh, most of the cases one dollar or less. So for semi-passive RFID, they are similar to passive, however they have an additional battery and the battery powers the tag when the signal is received. So when the signal is received, in this case the battery will also power the tag to transmit the identifier. They are of course of a bigger size, they can transmit for a longer range and they have a limited lifetime. Not like the passive which has a limited lifetime, the semi-passive has a limited lifetime and is also cheap. So the third and last type of RFID systems is the active RFID and this one it has its own internal power source like you can see in this figure here, okay, it has internal power source and the difference with semi-passive RFID is that the active RFID periodically transmits its ID or what we call a beacon. So so every certain amount of seconds, the active RFID will send its identifier so it can be received by receiver in proxy. So this active RFID, they have a bigger size, they have capability to transmit for longer ranges than semi-passive and passive, but also they are more expensive. So let's look how the RFID works. The concept is very simple. So here we should have an RFID reader and writer attached to a computer and this RFID reader transmit a signal to the transponder and this signal will carry out sufficient energy that will allow to power the chip that is in the RFID tag. And when the chip is powered, it will transmit back a signal and this signal contains the label or the ID of the RFID tag. So when the signal reaches the reader, okay, it's going to extract the ID and the label of the tag and transmit it to the computer and then may be used to query a database to find the corresponding object that corresponds to this uh, ID. Now let's look at the RFID techniques properties. 
RFID systems throughout the world operate in low frequency, which are referred as LF or high frequency HF or ultra high frequency UHF bands. There is also the microwave frequency band at 2.4 gigahertz. So the radio waves behave differently at each of these frequencies with advantages and disadvantages associated with each frequency band. So for the first case here, the LF, if an RFID system operates at a lower frequency, it has a shorter read range, as you can see here. This range is around 10 centimeters and a slower data rate but it has also an increased capabilities for reading near or on a metal or liquid surfaces on the other hand if a system operates on a higher frequency it generally has faster data transfer rates and longer read ranges than lower frequency systems you can see here for example if we are in the extreme case of microwave they can reach up to 10 meters but also there is a drawback for higher frequencies that they are more prone to interference they have more sensitivity to radio wave interference but might be caused by liquids or metal in the environment. So first of all, let's look at the low frequency RFIDs. LF RFIDs band cover frequencies from 30 kilohertz to 300 kilohertz, but typically they operate in the range of 125 kilohertz. Although there are some others that operate at 134 kilohertz, but the most typical frequency range is 125. So this uh, frequency band provides a short reading range of 10 centimeters, and also it has slower read speed than the higher frequency. But the good point is that it is not very sensitive to radio wave interference because it operates at a low frequency. The low frequency RFID is used in different applications, including access control and livestock tracking, to name a few. They are also used in animal tracking systems. Now let's move to the second type HF RFID or high frequency RFID. It operates in the band range from 3 to 30 megahertz, but most of RFID systems, they operate at 13.56 megahertz with a read range between 10 centimeters and 1 meter. So we can reach up to 1 meter in this category. They uh, actually has a moderate sensitivity to interference. So they are more sensitive than the low frequencies, but still the sensitivity is moderate. HF RFID are used in different applications, including ticketing systems, payment, and data transfer applications. So one of the technologies that is used in relation to HF RFID, it's the Near Field Communication, NFC, which I'm going to explain in later slides, which is actually a short range technology that is commonly used for data exchange between devices. The fourth type is uh, ultra high frequency RFID, and basically they cover the range from 300 megahertz, but typical system they operate at the frequency of 900 megahertz. Microwave also can be seen as uh, ultra high uh, frequency RFID, but it's another category operating at 2.4 gigahertz and, and may tolerate up to 10 meters for a distance range. So basically, the read range of uh, passive UHF systems can be as long as 12 meters, of course, in the band of 2.4 gigahertz, and it's uh, much lower with uh, 900 megahertz. The advantage of uh, ultra-high frequency RFID is that they have faster data transfer rate than low frequency and high frequency RFID systems. Also, UHF RFID are most sensitive to interference, much more than low frequency and high frequency RFID systems. But actually, many uh, UHF product manufacturers have found ways to design tags, antennas, and readers to keep performance high even in difficult environments. There are several applications, a wide variety of applications for UHF RFID, and this includes retail inventory management, pharmaceutical anti counterfeiting and wireless device configuration. Okay, now I'm going to talk about a sample of RFID applications. So in the following figure, we have a logistic inventory package tracking application where RFID can be used. For example, you can see here in the figure, in uh, the proximity of each door, we can have RFID readers that will allow to make the inventory of all packages that are inside a track. So this will allow to automate the process of tracking packages when they enter the warehouse or when they exit the warehouse. So these blue portals are RFID portals and the packages contain RFID tags that allow to identify them automatically. Another famous application of RFID is cattle tracking and management. We can put RFID tags in the ear of the cows or sheep and this will allow to track them and monitor them when they move from one place to another and also this was used in order to track how much time animals spend in eating or drinking other uh, rfid applications include also healthcare it can be used for patient identification okay and it was also used in the german clinic they have used rfid to track blood 
It can also be used for asset tracking and management in hospitals and also avoiding theft. So as you can see here, uh, RFID tags can be put in the leg of newborn babies to avoid uh, theft or accidents and also for avoiding theft of medical equipment. In 1998, in Malaysia, e-passport were including RFID tags. In Norway in 2005, Japan, UK, Australia, US and Serbia. They were also used in transportation systems in Portugal, okay, to make automatic payment in the highways and also they were used in uh, race timing applications.